What's up everybody, welcome back to Kevlar82 TV, your positive co culture channel. As you can see behind me, exactly where we're at, dude. We're back at 3.8 performance, man, dude. <laughs> dude, I got bit by the bug, dude. As you guys, uh, if you guys have been watching the channel lately, uh, I told you guys um, uh, right at the end of the year, before the uh, New Year's, I told you that I'm gonna be doing way more Project Batmobile Genesis Coupe content, and I'm keeping my word, dude. Back to um, mod in the car again, dude. Um, if you watch one of my last videos, dude, uh, the last thing I did was um, rigid collars and subframe bushing shims for like handling zero to 60. Um, you guys gotta watch my two videos. I did the install video with Dustin Davis, um, and I did uh, a review video that also has him in it, uh, talking a little bit more about um, how they affect your car mileage and whatnot. You guys gotta watch those two videos, dude because um, they really, really show improvement, dude. Unless, uh, no wheel hop, less spinning in first gear, I'm telling you, you will hook it and book it first and second and third, you'll be gone. Um, but yeah, enough about that, dude. Today, we're gonna be installing the uh, intake uh, manifold riser on my 3.8 um genesis coupe 2014 manual transmission dude i'm so excited man because this um this part right here i've been doing a lot of handling parts and everything like this but this one is straight power and torque you know so um i'm gonna leave the link in the description for this part dude a lot of you guys in the community might already have it and i know i'm late to the party but hey you know what i mean hey it is what it is dude for you guys that don't have it yet dude I'm going to help you guys along and show you how to install it, torque specs and whatnot. Uh, my boy Dustin Dave, that's why I have him install the parts because he knows the right way to put it in there. And I know I can do it. A lot of people give me slack, uh, flack about um, not installing the parts myself, but I'd rather have the professional do it. I film it and we have it for the community done the right way, dude. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and jump into it and get started with the install. Obviously, first thing you do is take that off. Very easy, just lift it. So we're gonna take the piece off the intake piping. This is your vent for the PCB. So when the PCB is closed, when you're driving around under throttle, this is the vent side. So it's just going to the intake. And then when you try and pull these hoses off, they'll get stuck on there after a while. You can take your pliers, grip on them gently, and then just rock it back and forth just to break it loose. And there you go. Now when I say gentle, especially on this one because this is plastic, you don't want to crush it in there because that'll be, that'll be a bad day. Yeah. And then when you take this off, one side is bigger than the other, so there's only really goes on one way. The bigger side goes to the intake.
So this is your, your EVAP solenoid right here. This helps pull uh, a slight vacuum on the gas tank. So that's what that is. A lot of people wonder what that is. And yes, it's supposed to make weird noises like ticking. This back here is your brake booster line. And just like over there, it gets stuck on the nipple. So just crack it loose with your pliers and then pull it off. taking these off they're pretty much all the same bolt so it's pretty hard to mix them up what size are they so yeah. the ones we're taking off right now are 10 mil and then this is the hose for the pcb valve right here To make this easier, you can take the upper manifold off with the throttle body attached. You just gotta do a couple things. Pull this bottom bolt out so that it releases the bracket for the cable. And then if you haven't done the coolant bypass, then you'll need to remove these coolant hoses. Obviously I recommend doing this when it's cold and not hot like it is now. I'm gonna do it, get some shop towels Stick them down here. Just to catch anything that might spill out, because it will spill out a little bit. So you can see that it's dripping. So if you end up having it drip like this, just pull it off just a little bit so that it keeps dripping until it starts to slow down because there's still pressure in the system. So if you were to pull it off with that pressure, then it'll just shoot out. It might get burned, get coolant everywhere. And you want to make sure you avoid getting any coolant on your belt. So just nice and slow. sound tube. So these upper bolts, these are 10 mil, these are 10 mil, and then the bottom ones are 12 mil.
So after you take all the bolts out of the upper manifold, you'll notice it kind of leans forward a little bit. So if the other bolts start to get hard to, to get out, just level this off with your other hand. One more bolt that goes to this uh, cover for the wire loom. It's right back here. And it's a 10 mil. So, the most annoying part about this is this doesn't move a whole lot, if at all. So just be patient, work around it. You can give yourself a little bit of slack, a little extra slack by pulling these off. They're color coded, so there's no way to get them wrong unless you're colorblind. In that case, mark one with tape or something. So a lot of people get intimidated by doing work like this. It's really not that hard. You're just undoing some bolts and pulling stuff off. It's kind of like a game of memory. So one trick to help you is take pictures as you're going so that you can refer back to them and you can see where everything went and how it was positioned before you took it off. All right. That's that. Like I said, you can take it off with the throttle body. Uh, it's just one less step that you have to do. Now we can move on to removing these studs. All right. All right, so take off your gasket. Now, a lot of people get confused. You will need two gaskets. So you already have one, it came with the car. When you order the riser, order a gasket with it if you don't already have a spare. You need one on top of the riser, one on bottom of the riser. And these are reusable. I don't know if you can hear that. They're metal, they're not paper. So they're reusable unless they're like severely damaged, which is pretty uncommon. Make sure you wipe off any oil that might be on it, and there will be oil on it, even if you have a catch can. I promise. And then just do the same. Just gently wipe off the top of the lower manifold. Just remove any excess oil. Okay, so the next step is we need to remove these studs. There's two studs in the lower manifold. So you want to prep this by getting some shop towels or rags or whatever it is you have. And you just want to stick them in these ports because you don't want to accidentally drop anything down in those ports. something in there you're gonna have a bad day all right all right so there's two ways to get these studs off there's the two nut method which is what I prefer that you do and then there's the gorilla method which is using vice grips uh, I don't recommend this unless the two nut method just is not working for you. You'll still need a pair of vice grips though. Uh, I'll show you why in a minute. So the best thing to do is sometimes these will just get stuck in here. You just want to get a hammer and you just want to gently tap on them. That's to shock the, the threads and help crack them loose. That's all you want to do. You don't want to smash on them. You don't want to break them. You don't want to bend them, chip them, whatever. Just gently tap them. That should be enough to break them loose. If you're still having trouble, you can get some PB blaster and let it soak in there for an hour or two. That'll help. All right, so the two nut method. You're gonna take those two nuts off, or the, the two nuts that you took off the stud earlier, 
you're gonna use them again. You're gonna put one back on the stud, upside down. So essentially they're gonna go on the stud like this, hat to hat. Get your 12 millimeter wrench and you're gonna tighten it on the stud. And you wanna go as tight as you can go. Now, if it's loose, the stud is loose. As you're tightening the nut, the stud will also turn with the nut and that's good. That means you can stop. Sometimes it doesn't work that way though. All right, that looks like it's turning. So now we'll get our second nut and we're gonna do hat down. Okay, so now that we have that nut on top of the other nut, we're gonna tighten it down. And then once the top nut is tight, I don't know if you could see it, but the stud started to turn, so that's a good sign. So now put your wrench on the bottom nut and then you're gonna loosen it up. Now what happens is the two nuts are tight together so when you're trying to loosen the bottom nut, it has nowhere to go because the top nut is holding it down. So the only thing that can turn is the stud. Now sometimes they're not tight enough on the stud and the two nuts will just spin off together. Uh, that really sucks, but just tighten up the bottom nut again, do it over, and if you keep having problems, you can use heat. I also did a video that you can look at on uh, on my channel on how to do the two nut method. It shows you how to use a torch and some other things that you can try if you're having problems. There you go, now the stud's out. Now that the stud's out, you gotta get the nuts back off of the stud, and that's a challenge on its own. Just get a second wrench, pull off the top nut, and now you're left with this bottom nut. This is where the vice grips come in. So you only have just a tiny bit of this shoulder here. So get as much as you can. And you have to play around with this because some wrenches are a lot, a lot wider than others. So you might not be able to get the wrench back on there. See, I can get this wrench on there. It's a lot skinnier or a lot thinner than the other one was. And then just loosen it up and there you go. And you'll notice on these studs, one side has more threads than the other. The shorter side goes into the lower manifold. Definitely keep these, don't get rid of them in case you ever have to go back to stock. Alright, so now just do the back. And this is the same on BK1 as it is BK2. I don't know if you want to do a close up on this. 
showing okay. how it's moving the stud. Yeah, I got it zoomed in. So you can see the studs moving when I turn this top nut to tighten it. That's how you know it's ready. So this is the safest method using the vice grips if you have to. Uh, usually it works if you use heat and you know PB blaster and the vice grips are big enough and tight enough but sometimes the studs are just so stuck in there that you end up ruining the stud and now you got this stud stuck in your lower manifold. Now some people ask me can you just leave the studs in there and run the riser with the studs and usually those people ask me after they've already done the install and they have two extra bolts and they don't know what the bolts are for. Uh, I don't recommend doing that. Some people have done it. They don't they haven't reported any issues. I mean as long as it's not leaking uh, you don't have any weird idle issues it's fine but I really don't recommend it. We give you six bolts Use six bolts. So you can see what happened here. The two nuts came off by themselves, but the stud, even though it was turning when we tightened it up, it didn't come off. That's annoying. So let's give another couple taps. We'll throw some PB blaster on there. Now the stud's turning. <clears throat> All right, there we go. Now this is the last stud, so if you want, you can just keep the nuts on there. That way you don't lose them. Okay, that's it. Now it's time to put the riser in. All right, so we got the studs out. Got our manifold painted. Now we're gonna put all this back together. So we're gonna put our original gasket back on there. Then you stick the riser on there. Now for anyone using the phenolic spacer, or those plastic gaskets or spacers get rid of those they're crap they don't work I know you bought them because they made claims we've already dyno proven that they don't uh, do what they say but they also don't work with the riser so if you just if you're trying to waste your money go ahead and put it back on there uh, but it's going to impact how the riser works and it's probably going to hit your hood so just sell them or throw them in the trash all right, so we got a gasket, we've got the riser, got another gasket. Now to make it easier on yourself, you just want to get a bolt and you want to line everything up just in this front corner and then one in the back corner. Just get everything lined up. 
hold it down, pull them out. And it's still gonna move around when you put the upper manifold on, but this at least helps it get it right in the ballpark. Okay, so now we gotta put the upper manifold on. All right, so get your manifold on there, grab your bolt, and then snake it through the holes so that you line up your gasket on the top with the riser and then line it up with the gasket on the bottom and then finally get it into the bolt hole on the lower manifold. And then get another bolt and do the same thing on the rear. Make sure that the gaskets are lined up. This can be a tedious process because you can get the bolt in and the gasket not be where it needs to be. So that's kind of annoying. And then I get this question a lot. Can you move this out of the way? No, you cannot. It's just in the way, it's there, it's life, deal with it. It's super annoying. I'm pretty sure Hyundai did it on purpose to piss us off. Yeah. Cause you have to take this upper manifold off in order to change your plugs. Which is also annoying. So hey, why not make it even more annoying? And these are 13 millimeter bolts. and make sure they all come with lock washers on them. Make sure the lock washers are on there. And then you torque them down, you just need, they just need to be hand tight. Maybe 20 foot pounds. This is all aluminum. If you over torque them, you're gonna strip out the threads and you're gonna have a bad day. So these long ones, these go on the top. The ones that come with the kit are a six millimeter uh, Allen wrench. Now these may be a little hard to get in depending on uh, the casting on your lower manifold. It's fine, just make sure that the lock washer is crushing. So what happens is the flashing on the bottom where the, they drilled the holes for the, the threads for these bolts, uh, they don't always go through all the way. So you kind of got to break through that with these bolts. And then same thing, you just tighten these up, just hand tight. There's really no set process uh, or order in which you need to tighten these down, uh, but usually going, starting from the middle, crisscross out, it's usually best, but not really an issue. So one thing you do want to do is, as you're tightening them down, you just want to make a couple passes because as you tighten them down, the other ones will become loose. So just go over them two or three times, make sure that they're still snug. All right, so now we'll put everything back on, plug in our sensor. This is the map sensor. And that is for there. All right, so something to mention again with this wire loom. So with the increased height because of the riser, that third bolt we took off down here, it doesn't fit anymore. And then this needs to get raised up. It does bolt on if you want. You can leave it unbolted if you want. That is up to you.
that. Don't forget to plug these back in. Definitely don't forget to plug in your brake booster line. I've had a couple people do that and they start the car and it scares the crap out of them. <laughs> and then I've had other people forget to put these clamps back on. Make sure you put those clamps back on always. Now, as you're putting everything back on, like the sound tube here, it's gonna be more of a tight fit. So just be patient, take your time. They'll go on. All right, so we're putting these coolant lines back on. Uh, the kit has an option to come with a longer piece of hose, so you can either do the coolant bypass, which we'll be showing you in another video, uh, or just to cut in half and extend these lines. So some people do extend these lines. Um, they, they work just fine. Uh, I don't recommend you extend them, or if you do extend them, not for a long period of time. And then all you need is just regular hose from uh, AutoZone, just heater hose. And if you look in the instructions, it tells you what size hose you need, so there's no guesswork. I'm just gonna extend this one a little bit. So put your bolt back in with the bracket for the throttle body connector. Plug in your throttle body. I've had people forget that too and that can be kind of scary. Okay, double check everything's plugged in, all your lines are on, this one's not connected. Clamp, clamp good. Okay, so we designed the riser to work with the stock hood. Uh, everything's stock, including the stock air box. So, the stock air box, you will have to stretch the corrugated connector up a little bit, uh, but it does fit. So just take your time, be patient with it, and eventually it'll go on. Now, if you have a custom intake, uh, this one is pretty easy. This is just a short ram. It's not bolted any brackets. Uh, our custom cold air intake for the BK2 works. Uh, so far, I haven't really seen any that have not worked. Some of them do need to just be tweaked and finessed a little bit. Uh, but in the end of the day, they, uh, they all fit, so they all work. And if they don't, then maybe you just need a longer coupler or something, so it's an easy fix if not. Okay, and then one other tip. 
is your hose clamps. Because we did raise up the manifold, you want to make sure that your hose clamps are not up on top like this and that you don't have like uh, these pieces sticking out. You want them to be off to the side so that you have as much clearance as possible. Okay, plug in your IAT sensor and stick the bolt back in. Okay, so always double check, just make sure you have everything plugged in, everything's got the bolts in, the bolts are snug, everything's where it needs to go. And then once you're done with this, uh, go ahead and you're gonna wanna start up the car and make sure that there's, first of all, no leaks in the coolant lines, whether you put them back as they were or if you did the bypass, just make sure that it doesn't leak. Um, let the car sit for a minute, make sure there's no weird idling uh, issues. You don't have a high idle RPM. Uh, you don't hear any weird funny noises. Engine doesn't explode. You know, stuff like that. And then go for a drive. Get the car warm. Make sure it's okay. Come back and then you want to double check these coolant lines again once the car is hot. Just to make sure that they're not leaking. And if they're not leaking, then you're good to go. Alright, so that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, man. Um, hope it was very informative, man. Um, I know the video is gonna be pretty long. I can tell by the process that we do, but this is the way that Dustin Davis uh, he likes to really help you guys. So for you guys that are looking at how long the video was, oh, it took too long, but no, it takes patience and time with anything, dude. Of course, you want to do it right. Give you guys the correct specs for everything and how you how you want to make sure your metal full riser is done right, so you don't ruin anything on your car. But uh, yeah, so. So basically, I'm ready to jump in this bad boy and fill it, but you guys are going to have to wait for that, obviously, uh, for another video. We'll be doing a review. Um, I have so much content. We have, I'm already got appointments set up for the next, like, two or three months of the car or, or the things that we're going to change. We're going to do a coolant bypass. We're going to do some, uh, some other stuff with the manifold. And, dude, man, we have so much content dude that we're planning out so uh stay tuned to the channel hit that subscribe button right now hit the like button if you enjoyed it and i'll catch y'all later man i'm about to take this bad boy for a spin and like i say at the end of every single video man remember all we see the glass is half full not half empty stay blessed stay safe it's your boy kevin smiley signing out kevlar 82 tv peace Man, it feels good. Give y'all some pops at the end, just tap the throttle, you know what I mean? <laughs>